Hello and welcome to the solution video to spicy question number 39. So in this question we're told that 60% of the times were greater than 50 minutes and also that no student took longer than 100 minutes. This means that 40% of the times must have been between 0 and 50 minutes. For a histogram the height of the bar doesn't tell you its frequency, it's instead the area of the bar. So let's work out the area of the two bars that we've got in terms of larger squares. So the first bar is two large squares along the bottom and four large squares along the height, so that's two times four, which is eight. And the second bar is three squares along the bottom and eight squares high, so eight times three, that's 24 squares. We said earlier that 40% of the times were lower than 50 minutes. So we have 32 squares here in total, since so 24 plus eight is 32. So 32 squares represents 40% of the data. If you half this, then 16 squares is the same as 20% of the data, and then times this by 5, 80 squares will represent 100% of the data. So the whole of the histogram must have 80 squares in total. We've already got 32 of those squares, so 80 take away 32 leaves you with 48 squares left. Next in the question we're told the ratio of the number of students who took between 50 and 60 minutes to the number of students who took between 60 and 100 minutes is the ratio 3 to 5. So if we share these 48 squares into the ratio 3 to 5, we get 18 to 30. This means the number that took between 50 and 60 minutes is 18, and the number that took from 60 to 100 minutes is 30. So we need to draw 18 squares from 50 to 60, and 30 squares from 60 to 100. Now if we're going to do this, we'll need to have a much longer y-axis, so something like this. And between 50 and 60, we need 18 squares. Now the width of this bar is only going to be one square, so we need to go up 18 squares, so it's a really tall bar like this. Then from 60 to 100 we need 30 squares. The width of this is 4 squares, so 30 divided by 4 is 7.5, so we need to go up 7.5 squares like this. So this is the completed histogram. We now need to work out an estimate for the interquartile range of the times taken. Since there are 80 squares in total on the histogram, the lower quartile will be at one quarter of this, so 20 squares. We can multiply this number of squares by 3 to find the upper quartile, which is 60 squares. So, we just need to move in from the left hand side 20 squares and we'll find the lower quartile, and then in 60 squares to find the upper quartile. The first bar here has 8 squares, and we're trying to go 20 squares in. So we need 12 more squares from the next bar. The next bar is 24 squares, and we only want 12 of them, so we only want half of this bar. So we can split it right down the middle like this, and we find the lower quartile is 35. Now for the upper quartile, well this bar here has 18 squares, so if we take 8 squares, 24 squares, and 18 squares, that's a total of 50 squares. So we need 10 of the squares from the final bar, and the final bar has 30 squares in it. So we want one third of this bar. One third of the way from 60 to 100 is 13.3 recurring. So if you go 13.3 recurring in from 60, you end up at 73.3 recurring. To find the interquartile range, all we do is subtract the lower quartile from the upper quartile, so 73.3 recurring, take away 35, gives you the answer of 38.3 recurring. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found this useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next and subscribe so you don't miss out on future uploads.